It forms the fragile skin of a soda can, yet also the powerful wings of an aircraft. Humanity's appetite for this remarkable metal is immense, reaching 68 million tons in a single year. This staggering volume finds its way into everything from humble window frames to the sleek fuselages of modern jets. Meeting this demand without depleting the planet's finite resources required a revolutionary solution. That solution was found not in mining new earth, but in reclaiming what was already made through the process of aluminum recycling. The cycle begins with collected scrap, which is meticulously sorted and cleaned before being melted down and cast into new forms. Remarkably, this rebirth saves up to 95% of the energy needed for primary production. Within just 60 days, discarded waste is transformed back into pristine metal, losing none of its inherent quality and shining once more in our everyday lives. It can be crushed, melted, and reformed, yet its essence never fades. Where other metals degrade with each new life, aluminum can be reused infinitely without ever losing its original properties. This remarkable permanence is why nearly 75% of all the aluminum ever produced remains in circulation today, a testament to its enduring value. Across the United States, this inherent advantage has been forged into a pillar of industrial strength. Through sophisticated collection systems and advanced smelters, recycled aluminum now accounts for more than one-third of the country's annual supply. This process yields an astonishing energy saving of up to 95% compared to primary production, liberating enough electricity to power millions of households each year. The benefits, however, extend far beyond economics. The act of recycling aluminum serves a vital environmental role, reinforcing the nation's industrial leadership. For every ton of reclaimed aluminum, the emission of up to nine tons of carbon dioxide is prevented, which adds up to tens of millions of tons of greenhouse gases kept out of the atmosphere annually. This immense energy dividend becomes ever more critical as the country accelerates its shift toward electric vehicles, wind power, and solar energy. These are all industries that possess a vast and growing appetite for power, an appetite that recycled aluminum helps to satisfy. It is a material in constant demand, essential for everything from solar energy to aerospace. But its journey doesn't end when it's discarded, it merely begins again. The cycle of renewal starts with a deceptively simple act, collection. In the United States, a global leader in aluminum recycling, this process unfolds on an immense scale. It is a sprawling system that connects beverage can redemption centers, municipal waste facilities, and vast industrial scrap networks into a single cohesive operation. Each year, tens of millions of tons of aluminum are gathered from these countless sources, forming a relentless stream that feeds the nation's recycling infrastructure. What truly distinguishes aluminum is its inherent economic worth, even as scrap. A single discarded can holds significantly more value than a plastic bottle, creating a powerful financial incentive for both individuals and corporations to participate in its recovery. This built-in value is the primary reason America consistently achieves one of the world's highest aluminum recovery rates, ensuring a dependable domestic source of recycled material for its industries. From truck beds overflowing with food trays and cans to scrapyards that shimmer under the sun, this initial stage is the true gateway to the metal's rebirth. Here, the aluminum embarks on its path back into the modern world poised to be remade into something entirely new. From collection points nationwide, convoys of trucks heavy with scrap converge on massive staging yards. Upon arrival, each vehicle is carefully weighed and its contents logged before the container tilts, spilling its cargo onto conveyors that lead into the storage area. Cans from grocery stores, foil trays from homes, and offcuts from factories all merge into towering piles of gleaming metal, forming landscapes that resemble silver mountains.
on-site technicians conduct swift preliminary inspections, immediately identifying and rejecting any loads compromised by excessive impurities or hazardous materials. The atmosphere is one of constant motion, a high-paced environment where thousands of tons of aluminum arrive daily, making this the front line of the entire process. As the material moves onward, streams of scrap are carried along, continuously moving conveyor belts. Advanced optical sensors function like electronic eyes, scanning thousands of fragments every second to identify aluminum by its unique color and its distinct reflection of light. In the moments that follow, powerful magnets pass over the stream, pulling away any ferrous metals mixed within the scrap, while precisely timed jets of compressed air blast the lightweight aluminum away from paper, plastics, and other debris. Through these successive layers of separation, the once chaotic jumble of waste is methodically refined. It transforms into uniform flows of pure aluminum, which gather in glinting silver piles. At this stage, the stream of metal is now chemically consistent and carefully controlled, ready to move deeper into its journey of renewal. A deafening roar fills the air, the sound of metal being violently unmade. Once separated, the aluminum scrap tumbles onto conveyor belts, which relentlessly deliver a mix of beer cans, food trays, and industrial refuse into the jaws of a massive shredding system. Here, counter-rotating steel rollers armed with sharp teeth seize the metal. An intense crushing force shatters it instantly, filling the factory floor with a cacophony of sharp metallic clatter. In just a few revolutions, Hundreds of kilograms of aluminum are devoured and torn into small fragments. Assisting the rollers, rotating blades, and powerful crushing hammers allow the system to handle even thick, rigid aluminum parts with brutal, pre-programmed precision. Under the harsh glare of industrial lights, a continuous torrent of silver shards pours onto a lower belt, a glittering cascade of reclaimed material. From there, a vibrating screen ensures every piece is reduced to a consistent dimension, creating a uniform feedstock for the crucible that awaits. These shredded fragments now journey into the very heart of the recycling process, the industrial furnaces. The choice of furnace, be it a reverberatory, a rotary kiln, or an electric arc furnace, depends on the type of scrap and its intended final form. Each is a sealed world of engineering, meticulously designed to simultaneously govern three critical variables, temperature, airflow, and the rate of material mixing. The internal heat is held steady between 660 and 750 degrees, just enough to liquefy the aluminum without vaporizing its valuable alloy components. The metal pours in through a top hatch or a tilting chute where the molten bath is constantly agitated by mechanical paddles or precise injections of air. To maximize efficiency, some furnaces are fitted with heat recovery systems, while multi-stage filters scrub the exhaust to capture aluminum oxide dust and neutralize toxic emissions. Throughout this violent transformation, thermal sensors and chemical analyzers serve as the furnace's ever-watchful senses, ensuring every batch of molten aluminum meets exact technical specifications. This is where pressure, heat, and chemistry converge in a delicate, high-stakes dance. A single misstep could turn an entire batch to waste, but when every element performs in harmony, the result is a river of pure liquid metal, poised for its rebirth. Even after the aluminum has fully melted, it still carries invisible ghosts from its past. Countless hidden impurities, oxides, furnace dust, paint residues, and even oils left over from its previous life cycle remain suspended within the molten mass. To eliminate these contaminants, a refining process begins directly inside the furnace. The most common method is fluxing, which involves adding a special agent into the liquid aluminum. As it reacts, the flux bonds with impurities, gathering them into a light floating dross layer on the surface. This metallic foam is then skimmed off, either mechanically or by hand, 
leaving behind cleaner, more refined metal. In more advanced systems, inert gases like argon or chlorine are injected at low pressure. These micro-bubbles permeate the molten mass, trapping excess oxygen and hydrogen and carrying them to the surface for removal. This entire purification process runs under the constant supervision of temperature sensors and control systems, ensuring the molten aluminum reaches the purity level required for the stages that follow. The liquid metal holds infinite potential, but the next few moments will seal its fate. Having reached the necessary purity for the stages ahead, the molten aluminum is channeled toward the casting area. This is the critical transition from a formless liquid into its first defined solid shape, a structured unit that can be measured and transported. The metal flows into molds of steel, graphite, or specialized heat-resistant materials, with the choice depending on the product being formed. These can be vertical molds for ingots, horizontal ones for thick slabs, or continuous casting systems that employ water-cooled force solidification. Every variable, from pouring speed to mold temperature and cooling intensity, is precisely calibrated. If poured too quickly, the aluminum can develop gas pockets or surface cracks. If the mold is too cold, the metal may harden unevenly, creating hidden structural flaws within. Each parameter must be held in a delicate balance, as the slightest deviation can distort the entire shape of the final product. While many modern facilities fully automate this process with sensors monitoring the flow, some semi-manual lines still rely on the sharp instincts and split-second precision of skilled workers. A moment of stillness, then the machine awakens with calculated force. With the aluminum now solidified inside its steel cradle, a hydraulic system engages from below. A gentle but firm push from the bottom is all it takes to break the bond, releasing the solid metal from the mold's confining walls. Mechanical claws descend, gripping the heavy ingot, often weighing dozens of kilograms. It is lifted clear of the casting trough and set upon a parallel steel conveyor, the sound of scraping metal echoing as its surface still radiates a faint, residual red glow. The process repeats in perfect synchronicity, each ingot extracted in time with the machinery's rhythm to form a neat line on the moving belt. A battery of sensors sweeps over each piece, instantly checking its shape and dimensions to ensure no deformation occurred during its release. From the casting area, these rows of solid aluminum begin their steady journey onward. Aligned like perfect metal bricks, their procession marks the end of a full production cycle that began deep inside the furnace. Born from fire and cast in molds, the solid aluminum is about to face a new kind of force. With the production cycle in the furnace complete, the ingots are released and transferred into a preheating chamber, which softens the metal and brings it to the ideal condition for rolling. Once ready, each ingot is fed through a set of immense counter-rotating steel rollers. Tremendous pressure flattens and elongates the aluminum block, beginning its radical transformation. This process is repeated across multiple roller stands, with the gap between each pair gradually decreasing. An ingot that originally measured several inches thick often over 8 to 10 inches, is progressively compressed into a thin, uniform metal sheet. As the aluminum thins, a fine mist of water cools its surface, keeping the material stable and preventing the intense heat from causing cracks or warping. By the final stage, the sheet achieves its target thickness, sometimes down to just a few hundredths of an inch. It emerges as a continuous strip, guided forward and wound tightly into large coils. These standard semi-finished coils are now ready to move on to further processing, such as cold rolling, cutting, or stamping, depending on their ultimate purpose. It returns to our hands in mere weeks, a ghost of its former self, reborn. Of all the products forged from recycled metal, the aluminum can offers the most vivid testament to this cycle its journey beginning with massive coils of aluminum. From these, 
thin sheets are unspooled and stamped into countless flat circular disks known as blanks. Each blank is then driven into a deep drawing press. With a single forceful stroke, the metal is instantly stretched and formed into a shallow cup complete with thin walls and a solid flat base. This newly formed cup travels through a series of ironing dies where each pass progressively thins the walls and stretches the vessel upward until it achieves its final familiar height. The upper rim of the can is then carefully narrowed, preparing it for the eventual attachment of the lid. Next, a microscopic layer of polymer is sprayed onto the interior, creating an invisible barrier that prevents direct contact between the aluminum and its contents, safeguarding both flavor and safety. The can's exterior is brought to life as high-speed rotogravure printing applies intricate labels with incredible precision, decorating thousands of units every minute. Once complete, the finished cans are stacked into vast, gleaming arrays, poised to enter the filling and sealing lines. It's a symbol of modern convenience, found in nearly every corner of our lives. But its true story begins only after it has been emptied. From here, these familiar cylinders populate our world, lining store shelves and cooling in buckets of ice. They are the sound of celebration at bustling parties and the quiet companion to moments of family connection. Each day, hundreds of millions are opened across the globe, their use seamlessly woven into the fabric of daily existence, marking everything from a brief pause in a busy day to a shared experience between friends. Yet, the can's purpose is far from over once its contents are gone. Emptied, it arrives at a pivotal crossroads. One path leads to a landfill, the other to a near-infinite cycle of renewal. In regions with deposit return systems, an astonishing 80% or more are recovered, transformed back into new products within just a few weeks. By contrast, a can thrown into household waste becomes a burden on the environment, a tragic end for one of the most sustainable materials ever engineered. The can's ultimate destiny, therefore, rests entirely on a single choice. Each time one is placed in a recycling bin, it represents a crucial link in a sustainable chain, guaranteeing that the aluminum continues its perpetual journey rather than meeting a final, wasteful end. Its journey could end here, a piece of forgotten waste buried in a landfill. Or it can be granted a new beginning, rejoining a cycle that never truly stops. We have followed the remarkable path of aluminum's resurrection, a closed loop system of perpetual renewal. What was once dismissed as simple scrap is endlessly reformed, woven back into the fabric of our lives as soda cans, architectural frames, and even vital aircraft components. This circular economy is not merely a marvel of engineering. It is a direct reflection of the small choices we make each day. The can held in a hand faces a crossroads. It can become permanent refuse, or it can return to the production line, reborn as a new object in just a matter of weeks. The outcome hinges on a single deliberate action guiding it to the correct recycling bin. In that moment, we decide whether its story concludes abruptly or if it continues its infinite voyage, contributing to a more sustainable future for us all.